Hey guys, this is going to be another installment of my JavaScript series, and I'm using realistic examples as your guide to kind of do more with JavaScript other than what books and tutorials will tell you just about how programming fundamentals work. I just find that those are so broad in perspective of how you'll actually use the code that most people, at least me in particular, I need to see how I would approach something realistic to use of that nature for. So like for loops or click events, all those things. It's like, well, when, when am I going to use this and how am I going to use it and how am I going to pair things doing so and make them graceful and all that jazz. So I figured I'd show an example I've been using on my side project called Affinicast. And at the top, I have this banner that is a place where I just call attention to things that happen or just you know prompt people to, for input as they visit the site. But the catch here is that this thing can be canceled or, or deleted in essence. So if you click this icon, it stores an actual cookie in your browser and remembers that you've actually clicked that button and this is all happening through JavaScript, mind you. So I figured we'd recreate something like this in just a quick code pen, continuing on in the JavaScript series. So I'll just demonstrate as I click this button, it fades out and you'll notice, okay, it's gone. If you were to come back to the page, it's gonna maybe flicker again because I'm running a local host, but it doesn't appear again. And that's, that's the whole point because it's re remembering that state initially. So obviously there's a little jumpy there, so it's an edge case but you could probably you know, do something a little quicker on terms of when the browser is loaded, it waits for the DOM content to load first, and then you do those things. So I do have a pin set up, which I'll share with you. It's got a very similar look and feel. Right now, this is just the presentation layer. I have what basically what I have on my app here. You can go check out the type form. If you're an Affinicast user, feel free to fill it out. <laughs> it would help me. Uh, but other than that, I have just an icon to close over here on the right, some SAS uh, to kind of demonstrate the look that I'm after. And all in all, we're just going to be writing the JavaScript here. So I'm not going to focus on, you know, these style properties and how I came to this point. Uh, just inspect that code and hopefully you can get the gist of it. So to save your time, I'll just do the JavaScript side and we'll just kind of look at our HTML for reference. So typically in a big app, you kind of want to scope things. When I wrote this for my app, I used its own function at, in essence to call upon it later. But in this case, since we're just in a single pin, I'll probably author it a little bit differently. It's okay if it's not perfect. I'm looking at my source of my current site as an example. So um, I actually wrote it in jQuery first. So I'm gonna be um, typing this live in vanilla JavaScript. So let's try and see what happens here. So I'm going to declare a variable called broadcast. And this is just going to be that whole entire object, this whole container element that is this top bar. So I'm going to get a document dot query selector and then get the class of broadcast. And uh, with that, you could just console log and just make sure that's actually a thing. Just to verify JavaScript's working, all is grand. Open up the console. Um, code pin's kind of crazy with the console, so we'll see what's going on here. Sandbox, I'm not sure what that's all about. Um, they do recommend using Google Chrome in code pins. I, I like to use Firefox developer edition, so sorry if you see a bunch of errors, but we do get that div back way at the bottom, so that's cool. So that confirms everything's actually working, JavaScript's up and ready to roll. Uh, on top of the broadcast element, I wanna get a reference to our close button. So I'm gonna do close broadcast, and we'll just do the same thing. So document query selector. And this is vanilla JavaScript, of course. That's the whole point. I want to just do this the traditional way as opposed to reaching for jQuery or something, which isn't bad. It's just something you don't necessarily need these days. Okay, so the secret to all of this is storing a cookie. And the idea is that I want to make sure if a user decides to hide this thing, that continues in their, in their session until they clear their cookies, of course. So to do that with JavaScript, we can use and hook into a in 
internal API that is a cookie library. So we can do bar cookie equals read cookie. And we're gonna call, this is what you would call it in the essence. So I'm gonna just call hide broadcast bar. Cookies get stored in your browser. And you can see those things in, under storage and even CodePen uses those, as you can see. This is the naming convention. That once we actually can initialize this, this thing will end up here on our session. So hopefully it works in CodePen. I didn't really check to see if it would make a difference, but we'll, we'll find out. So it does work on my site, so I can you know at least verify that. Okay, so we wanna say if cookie uh, is equal to t equals signs true, and we're gonna actually set it to true. Then we'll just do a broadcast. I wrote hide traditionally, and that's definitely jQuery, so we can just do broadcast style dot display equals none is another way to do it in vanilla JavaScript. It's basically doing the same thing as hide. Okay, so with that, close broadcast, reference that. This is going to be our close action. So we'll say on, or let's say dot add event listener, click, we'll pass a function through, and then the event, which is E in this case. You can call that whatever you want. I just use E for short. And then again, we'll do if cookie not equal to true. broadcast we could say fade out or just that's again jQuery so I'm gonna put style display non again it's basically setting it here if it's a if the cookies in your session we're setting it initially to not display otherwise if you're clicking to close that broadcast bar on your own we're gonna do the same thing so technically you could extract this and make it its own function. Just call that within here, but that's something we could refactor on later. And then with that done, we can then create cookie broadcast bar. Uh, let's see, we'll set it to true. The amount of time, I think it's seven days. I believe that ends up being that much. And you gotta spell right. So for a week I set that. And then on the event, we wanna, get, prevent the default on that actual button because right now it's anchor tag in our markup. So I want to actually not make it a realistic link, but rather just do something with JavaScript. So we can do that like that. And that's that bit. Okay. So we have an error obviously because that function doesn't exist and I'm calling it uh, too soon. So what I would typically do is have the functions probably higher up near our variables just so they're in view and we can see what's going on. Uh, but below we're gonna call these things, which we haven't actually created yet. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna do a function create cookie, name, value, and days will be arguments. And then if days, days will say variable or var date equals new date. And if you wanna go ES6 and use the let or const here, feel free var works just the same. Obviously they're different, but it works in this case. Uh, so then we'll take that date variable and set time date dot get time. So this is gonna be what we can set in that function to say, hey, expire after this long. So then we'll say days times 24. We've gotta do a little math here. 60 times 60 times a thousand. And I didn't just invent this, it was something I did research to get correct, um, but that's just gonna let it do the expiration thing we're after. So expires equals comma. Equals this. 
So you can do it all in line with that without writing the brackets if you really want to. And then we could take from that the document dot cookie equals name plus equals sign plus value plus expires plus quote and then path oops, equals this and that's going to be another quote so we're basically inventing this cookie string with string literals not even literals but just creating these strings from these functions and calculations uh, so it's kind of complicated but it does work the, if you googled the create cookie thing you'd find that pretty easily so feel free to do that if it's confusing it is for me for sure so don't feel bad if it isn't so we've got that we're, we set the date time we got the date time and we're adding it to the days and calculating the cookie then we're going to read the cookie with this function. So read cookie. And we'll just pass in the name, which is what we called it up here. Hide broadcast bar. So then we'll say var name equals name plus equal semicolon there. Var ca equals document dot cookie dot split. So we're going to split it with a semicolon. Then we're going to loop through. So this is where it gets super over my head, but I'll, I'm going to type this in and you guys see if we can transcribe this together. All right, so that jarled mess is reading the cookie. So we're going through, splitting it, looping through each instance of it, basically all the cookies in the browser, and finding by name what we pass through here. It's a little over my head, to be honest. I've definitely referenced this, but I think it's just validating that we're reading the exact cookie we're after. Uh, and if it doesn't find it, it just returns null. So that's that function. On top of that, we're gonna have an erase cookie function again passing in the name and then we'll just say create cookie name uh, empty string and then negative one essentially erases it by creating it okay so with that we're able to do these things can actually remove that it should stay hopefully It does, cool. So all of that jarled mess, like I said, is what's responsible for this. So essentially we're looking for an event listener upon clicking, and if the cookie doesn't exist already, we are going to create a cookie and remember that state based on the user's browser and their parameter passed in here, that's gonna be the time frame that we want them to keep that cookie. So unless they clear the cookies in their browser, are they gonna see that banner again? And that's the whole point. So if I were to open this pen in a new browser window, I think I'm able to still see, I'll probably have to log in again, but able to see that banner, I believe. Yeah, so this is the incognito in Firefox developer. It's a quick way to test that you need to see something of like maybe maybe a signed out user or someone who hasn't had that cookie established. Uh, you can do so like this, and it doesn't it doesn't mean you need to be signed in because a cookie. That's what's great about a cookie is you can almost do things like you would do if you had a user who is logged in and saved their stuff to a database. And, but in this case, we're just using JavaScript to save it to your browser temporarily because you can't actually just use the browser as a storage thing. Well, I guess you can with local storage, but that's a whole nother conundrum. And it's still something your the user could delete from their browser voluntarily. So it's something you can't 100% rely upon, but it does work in many situations where you need to carry data that isn't necessarily saved to a database to begin with. So with this, uh, we have our 
actual JavaScript in place, essentially creating a cookie, reading a cookie, and erasing a cookie all within an event listener. So that's what I've used on my site. I definitely reference, I think, Stack Overflow like everyone else to find these crazy functions. This is native JavaScript that hooks into the API that's built into browsers these days now. So we can do the cookie stuff in line. There are libraries you can use to do this for you. Like um, I know there's just some jQuery ones. If you want to reach for that, it does it, it makes it way more convenient and easy to understand. But I figured I'd show the real vanilla way to go about it and just implore this in your own application. So things like a broadcast bar or announcement banner or something like that uh, make it pretty effortless to implement. So overall, just you know, saving that state and making a better user experience for your users is going to be a win-win in my opinion. I will share with you this code pen. So definitely check it out. Feel free to steal this code user in your own apps. Um, again, I'm going to have my real type form here, so don't abuse that if you don't mind. But if you want to check out Affinicast and see what I've been up to, um, you can. And basically the survey is asking current users what they're after, what they're uh, looking for in terms of features, if they want to see something improve, etc. I'm just looking for feedback so I can make this thing better and better. So I think I'll quit yakking. Uh, hopefully that helped you guys. If you wanna like or subscribe, I'd appreciate it. If not, that's cool too. And hopefully I will continue this series uh, promptly. So thanks for watching. Peace.